Hey, get out of here, buddy. Hey, 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 no, buddy. No. No. What's up, KC9? Not much. Same here. I was bored, so I'd been organizing all my 2020 stuff and thought I'd see, uh, throw some stuff up for sale. Trying to do it cheaper than eBay. Um, just because I don't want to hassle with eBay. So if there's something, anything you want to see, let me know. Uh, it's a lot of low end stuff. There's some better stuff.
If I don't sell anything, then um, that's fine too. Just something to do, really. Have the kids with me. This is some random stuff that's for sale. I have ton almost everything piled up in camera sight there, stuff that I have for sale. And I'll start kind of going through some of it here shortly. Another Aaron Judge. All right, so I'll just roll. I'll just show some of the stuff off. If anyone sees anything they like, let me know. This is all heritage. This year's heritage. I ended up with a lot of short prints. So these are all short prints, the high numbered short prints. J.D. Martinez, James Paxton, Araldis Chapman, D.J. LeMayhew. These would all be a dollar a piece. Alex Verdugo, Daniel Vogelbach, Cole Calhoun, Sonny Gray, Michael Brentley, Blake Snell, Jorge Alfaro, Hunter Renfro, Miguel Sano, Christian Walker, Shane Bieber. That would all be a dollar each. Uh, Patrick Corbin jersey. Dollar. Charlie Morton uh, Heritage Chrome Refractor. 571, that would be a dollar. Um, these are the uh, white bordered. They're not numbered on card, but I think the print run is either 50 or 71. I think it's 50. So they'd be, I uh, almost said $50. $5 $5 $5 They seem to be going for around 7 on eBay. This one is uh, the Astros, unfortunately. <laughs> and I have another white one of Austin Hayes at the Baltimore Orioles. Same price, $5. Even though that old Altuve one would do a lot better if uh, things wouldn't have happened, I bet. George Springer, one dollar. Garrett Cole, short print, one dollar. Yankees. Ted Williams. Um, this is the X. I don't know why I want to say X Factor. That's totally not right. I don't know what these are called, but it's die cut. So, dollar. Honest Wagner, short print. This is a regular short print, not the short, short print. That'd be a dollar. Uh, this is higher end. Um, if someone's interested in that, there's definitely a price, but it is not cheap. It's numbered out of 25, though. We'll show it off anyway, whether or not anyone's interested or not. So, I've seen some of these go for as high as 70 on eBay, which kind of surprised me. I bought this... Um, not thinking they were going for that much. So I've seen them go. I think I saw one for 70 and one for 90 on eBay. And I'd be less than that regardless. Because it really caught me off guard that it was going for that much. This is a Ronald Acuna with no uh, tops emblem. Um, $75. Yeah, the Lizardo is awesome. Like if I didn't sell it, I'd be fine. I'd just keep it. Man, I have a feeling he might be really good, but... You never know with pictures. But uh, yeah, if I end up not making a sale on this, this is not one of those cards where I'm like, I better sell it regardless of what I get for it. This is something I'd probably hold on to. Uh, the Cuneo's 5. No top logo. Uh, this, uh, uh, someone has been looking at this one, so this one's not for sale just yet, but the Gavin Lux foil. Um, I have someone looking at. Um, I only have two cards in this entire collection that um, someone else is interested in. 
But I figured I'd show them off anyway. But I'll show show it to the gentleman that's that's interested in it. See if he wants it before I actually let that one go. This is a uh, Jake Rogers, number to one hundred, a rookie. He's a rookie. He's not a big time uh, big time name or anything yet. But that might be good for a Tigers fan. He's born in '95, so that makes him 25 years old. Stats aren't too spectacular. I don't know. Uh, I really don't know much about them. But uh, I'd look up a price, but probably not much. Darwin's in Hernandez Auto, probably be three dollars. Uh, Paul DeJong, Sky High, autograph from Donruss, four dollars. Not numbered. Uh, Michael King, Signature Series. This is Donruss, uh, rookie for Yankees, two dollars. Uh, Yadier Molina. This isn't even 2020. I thought it was 2020. This is 2019. I threw this in my 2020 pile. It has the bazooka back. Uh, probably five dollars. I didn't look. I didn't look and see how 2019 was doing. I was gonna say ten, but I was thinking that was 2020. 2020 is probably just a little hotter right now. Uh, Garrett Cole. This is like a gold refractor, number the 50. It'll be five dollars. Araldis Chapman Blue, number the 250. Be like two dollars, and then um, everyone says make sure you go through your tops cards and make sure you pull out your vintage stocks and your advanced stats. I went through my tops cards so many times, and I came <laughs> came across this. This is a vintage stock yeah. with the old vintage tops logo. Yeah. Totally never caught it the first two or three times I went through them all. So Patrick Corbin, and it's numbered out of ninety nine. So, probably $2. Totally caught me off guard, even though I had this card. Until I went through them all last night. Uh, and then these are the uh, advanced stats. Didn't know I had them. Once again, I thought I checked everything, but apparently I didn't. Uh, Tanaka for the Yankees. Numbered 63 out of 300. $1. Kenley Jansen. Same thing, advanced stats. 230 out of 300. $1. But three cards I didn't know existed. And there's a good chance I could have sent them out to someone, um, you know, with a Dodgers lot or a Yankees lot. Everyone's dream to get something crazy that they didn't think they'd be getting. <laughs> um, The Aaron Judge. A rookie medallion card. I was thinking five dollars. The Anthony Rizzo jersey card that has a piece of tape on it. I did not put that tape on there. Don't know where it came from. Could have been. I don't know. Could be nothing. Could be something. I don't know. Two dollars, regardless. Don't know where the hell the tape comes from. Uh, Roger Clayman short print. Two dollars. And an Aaron Judge Donruss uh, jersey relic. Be five dollars. All right, so if we're talking low, low end, I have some stacks of cards here. These are a lot of my doubles and stuff. There's a big ass spider on my wall. Dancing games, if I can find something to kill it with. Moved into this house not too long ago. And spiders are coming out. Okay. All right. So lower end stuff. And I do have some other higher end stuff. I just got to pull it all together. Um, these are a lot of my doubles. These are literally be like a quarter each. For the most part. Trout might be 50 cents or something. But Cody Bellinger, Diamond King, Christian Yelich, Giancarlo Stanton. Mike Trout, Mike Trout would be 50 cents. Otani a quarter. 
Uh, Rungle Wakina nickname, 50 cents. Juan Soto, 50. Chris Bryant, quarter. Aaron Judge, a quarter. These are opening day. Uh, Glaver Torres. Giancarlo Stanton. Mickey Betts. Cabrera. Lindor. Mike Trout would be 50. Three holes. Everything else here, a quarter. Otani. I do have inserts and uh, foils and stuff coming up too. So it's not just going to be base here. Justin Verlander. Altuve. Harper. Ronald Aquino would be 50. He kind of has to be. Um, Pete Alonzo, I think we could do a quarter. Max Scherzer. Quarter. Juan Soto. You know what? We'll do, do a quarter for that, that one. Quarter. Chris Bryant. These are all opening day. Javier Baez. Quarter. Paul Goldschmidt. Christian Yelich. Cody Bellinger. All a quarter. Walker Bueller. Clayton Kershaw. Buster Posey. Manny Machado. Manny Machado. Nolan Arenado. All a quarter. Um, that other one, so though, I can do it for a quarter too. Regular base. And the Ronald, the regular Ronald Latina can be a quarter too. There's no point in getting crazy. All right, Heritage, Buster Posey. These are all be a quarter. Buster Posey, Cody Bellinger. None of these are short print. Regular base. Scherzer, Cabrera. Uh, this has Mike Trout on it. Still a quarter though. When you add in everyone else in the mix. Verlander and Kohler on that one. Alonzo Bellinger on this one. Max Scherzer, DeGrom, Strasburg, Kershaw on that one. All of those are a quarter. Aaron Judge. These are regular tops. Torres. These are all going to be base. These are all going to be a quarter except for our Trout. The trout will be 50 cents. Verlander. Verlander. Harper. Alonzo, cup card. I don't have my uh, Acuna, uh, not Acuna, uh, Tatis Jr. Any twins? Yeah, I'll pull some twins out here in a moment. Um, I should have some twins. I know I have some Max, like lower end Max Kepler stuff. Um, I'll pull those out here in a moment. Uh, Ronald Acuna, Juan Soto, Scherzer, Scherzer. All of these are a quarter. Juan Soto. I've seen a lot of these with the opening day stuff. Kershaw, Bellinger is in there. Posey, Machado, Machado, Glaber. You're like Nolan Arenado uh, foil. That'd be 50 cents. I was actually not supposed to be in that pile, but it was. All right. So let me see what I can find for uh, twins real quick. Twins, twins, twins. Twins, twins, twins. And I have another box of stuff that uh, isn't 2020. And I normally typically keep them in um, team order. So that should be something I should be able to just dig into. Angels. Hey, Kendall Brown. And hey, Big D's. I didn't say hey. Even though I'd seen your uh, message. So, if anyone wants to see anything, uh, most of it is uh, low end, quarter, 50 cents, stuff like that. If you have any teams or names of people, most of it's 2020 stuff. But um, I do have some other random things floating around. So, it's not all organized very well, but it's stuff that I can get to relatively quickly. And, uh, yeah, that's really it. $4 to ship. Doesn't matter how much you buy. I'm not currently trading, but if uh, things end up not selling, you know, after a few days, then I'm more than willing to trade. It's not like I need the money super bad, but it's always nice to get a little bit to, for, uh, for some fun stuff. All right, here's a few twins.
The shit I got. Braves. I should have some Braves. I don't have any Kellenic or Blade. Blade. I do have a Blade card, but I'm kind of sitting on that one at the moment. An autograph. Um, here's some of the twins. Uh, Rod Carew. This would be a quarter. That's from Heritage Flashbacks. Uh, Taylor Rogers Foil. Quarter. Max Kepler. I could probably do a quarter. It's a foil. With the rainbow. Uh, Tops Turkey Nelson Cruz. Max Kepler Home Run Challenge. Um, this is a... Uh, it's not really Twins. It kind of is, kind of isn't. It's a... Uh, is that Twins? Good run for the Tigers here. I think that's Polanco with the Twins. And the yellow, it's like a Walgreens card. A Walgreens retail yellow quarter. Nelson Cruz, this is a foil. Diamond King. Uh, the Burt Y11 and the Kirby Pockets. And everything in that pack would be a quarter each. How much for all? Uh, hold on. One dollar. Two dollars. Two seventy-five. Uh, do like I could do two dollars for the whole stack there. Uh, and then I should have some other twin stuff. Let's take a look. And I do have some rougher uh, vintage stuff too. And here's some of my other twin stuff. This is from different years. 95 Ultra All-Star. Um, Brian Dozier. This might be a short print. I don't know if it is. Well, Pockets a dollar. Um, Brian Dozier, quarter. Jim Tome, quarter. This is a 2019 Franchise Free Tournament Killer Brew. Okay, I'll pull that Kirby aside. Um, Killer Brew and Jim Tome, Diamond Duos, 2011. Jim Tome, 11, 2011. Uh, Puckett, this is Donruss, 2016. Uh, Burt Bylevin, 2011, Lineage. Uh, Joe Maurer, then and now. This is from 17. Jake Odorizzi, 150th um, stamp. Um, those all would be a quarter each. So, gotcha at 225 there so far. Let me see if I get anything else. I do have some just random stuff. I thought I had some more Max Kepler things. Twins, 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 twins. Nothing there. Let's go back. You're interested in all of those twins cards? Actually, than all of them, um, you know, they'll be, they won't be a quarter. They all won't be a quarter each. We'll cut some deals for buying up. I do have something that might interest you, Kirby Pocket wise. And then I still remember I need to pull out some Braves. Yeah, I have some of this stuff just not organized. I don't know why I have a random Eddie Rosario that I can just throw in. There's nothing special about it. It just happened to, I guess, make its way into this box. Normally, I try to keep only cards that have something, either a star on it or a relevance of some sort. I have a few more cards in here than I thought that wasn't organized. Do, 
Take a minute here. Yeah, yeah, I live in Kansas City. So I'm a pretty big Royals fan, but I don't want to get the wrong, everyone give the wrong impression. I don't really PC the Royals. I PC certain cards, but I don't, I don't PC just like everything imaginable. That might be something of interest to you. few more stacks here and then I should be good to go on uh, with a full twins wise. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, yeah, there's a there's probably like 300 cards here that I actually didn't plan on digging into, but um, they're they're for sale too. I just haven't put in the footwork to get them organized. I I I'd only organize my 2020 stuff. Which is very time consuming in itself. Bo, yeah, Bo's a good one. I like George Brett. Um, Bo Jackson. I do collect, but I kind of collect um, all the Hall of Famers uh, in the Royals Hall of Fame, which is some lower name players like uh, Brett Saberhagen, Willie Wilson. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Dennis Leonard. It's something that kind of. That I can kind of do without having to spend a lot of money. Stuff that just kind of gets thrown into the mix a bit. Um, you know, because I, I like Mike Trout, Frank Thomas, King Griffey. Yeah, it was a good time in 014, or 014, in 14 and 15. Um, that was the first uh, playoff and championship in my adulthood. I was five years old when they went in 85, so that really doesn't count for me. It's a Kirby pocket. I found a few pockets here. I think I'm getting ready to hit the end of my pile here. Hey guys, I'm about to move this chair if you guys aren't even going to let me sit down. If I can't sit down, there's no point in all of us being bunched up next to the camera like this. Yeah, yeah the camera. 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 A thousand Kirby cards, man. Oh, Merrifield? Yeah, I like Merrifield. Thing about Merrifield, he doesn't really have any rookie cards like a lot of these guys do. Alright, I think I've gone through all these, so I, I actually didn't have many more twins cards. Alright, so I came across this Kirby pocket. I think this is Prism oh, yes. from 19 or 18. Yeah, 2019. Oh, yes. Kirby Pocket Prism. Oh, yes. uh, really cheap, 92 tops. And then I have these for five dollars. The Pocket Rookie, 85 tops. I got two of those. If you have a thousand Kirby Pockets, I assume you already got that one. Set those aside. And the twins from earlier. And in this other box. Oh, you got a lot of those uh, prism ones? Those are, I haven't collected any, but I bet that, that's fun with all the color variations and stuff. Alright, so I'll put that back. I'm sure you have that 92 tops one too. That's a pretty common one. Uh, 
I have the, uh, I don't know if you like Max Kepler. I have the uh, Mojo. It's not called Mojo. Maybe it is. The refractor there. I also have the regular 85. Do, 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 do. And okay. I think that's it on the Kepler. Okay. Yeah, the Mojo cards. Those are always fun ones. Yeah, I think the set would be fun, fun, fun one to do. Okay, make sure I got nothing over here. And I think that's about it for twins cards. At least through this whole battle. I've an ungodly amount of cards that still need sorted through. And I'll keep that in mind with Pocket. Because I know I've got quite a bit of Pocket stuff floating around. Just not easily accessible. And I've, I've quite a bit of 2020 uh, rookies in general. I can't think of the twins rookies. Them having a big list of rookies. At least this year anyway. Purple Mojo. For That's cool. That's not bad at all. I haven't gotten any of the colored ones other than the, the Lizardo that I showed off earlier. Hey guys, you guys got to back this chair up because now i got to stand and do this. Because you guys commandeered my chair. Yeah. Yeah. For the curvy rookies and, and everything that I had here. Did you want the duplicates too? I guess that would be a question. Kirby Puckett, Kirby Puckett. There's only a few duplicates in there, but some Jim Tomes and uh, the Rod Carew is a duplicate. And, and the Keplers, I think. Two Kirby Puckett rookies. Actually, I just got those recently. And then our two Max Keplers. One being the uh, Mojo there. Trying to make it reflect nicely. Yeah, there you buggy. Yeah, I mean, even, even uh, being a Tati second year card, I bet it will command some good money. You know, if it grades out well. These away because let's see. Uh, so I'm gonna count out loud and then I'll change the price. So that's ten dollars. No doubt. Yeah, I can do 20 delivered, I think, for everything there. 20 shipped. Um, and I didn't say anything earlier. I do have 2020 tops Bo Bichette rookies, Jordan Alvarez rookies, and Gavin Lux rookies at $3 each. And I have quite a few of them. So if you need any, any interest in any of those for anyone, let me know and I can pull them out. And then I have opening day rookies of Boba Shett, Jordan. I think I only have one available each, and those would be $3 each. Okay, well, let me set those aside and put a little note on them. Because I will forget. And honestly, I thought I had more Max Kepler stuff because I ended up in a, uh, a Twins break. And I ended up with just so much, uh, so much.
so many uh, Max Max Kepler stuff. But I don't know, there was a few Max Keplers in there in that pile. Okay. It's nice when my kids don't take my pin. All right. I'm in this big basement here and I can't find a single pin. Hey, 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 no, buddy. Sorry, I hope this is still recording. My son decided to yank the camera down. Looks like we're still on. Okay. It's good to know if that happens. I don't lose all my work. Or, you know. Um, um, everything I sell, by the way. Everything. Um, I'll throw in some extra stuff. Um, just because that's kind of what I do. I want to make it worth, not just worth the four dollars, but worth the shipping part of it. That's what kind of sucks about shipping and paying the money to ship. All right. All right. Finally found a pin. My God. All right. Twenty dollars. All right. So I do remember saying I throw up some brave stuff. Oh, I have it in the description, and then I'll also type it in here. That's my PayPal email address. And I got all that pulled aside. All right, Braves cards. Try to zoom through these. Watch it with that screaming, man. That's really high pitched. Here's a few. This is just the regular base. Uh, this is opening day. Uh, quarter. Um, this is the regular top series one for a quarter, and then this is the top series one without the uh, logo. Logo's missing. Yeah. They've been selling for around seven or eight on eBay. Uh, I'll do that one for five. Um, I got this one for fifty cents. It's the Donruss twenty twenty uh, nickname uh, name variation. Thank you, Big D, Sports Cards and Collectibles. 
That sounds good. Yeah, I'll ship them out as soon as possible, which probably this weekend. I say probably it will be this weekend. I think I missed, 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 missed some, uh, some of the messages here. Okay, so I do have more Braves. Let me hunt them down. Uh, Ronald or Keener, a turkey. 50 cents. Uh, Dale Murphy for a quarter. Uh, different Dale Murphy. No, buddy. No, no, no. You do not do that. Uh, this Dale Murphy to 85 for a quarter. Kids are watching some sort of puppy dog show. It's the, uh, Crazy song in the background. Hank Aaron, uh, insert quarter. And, and Chipper Jones, 35th anniversary for a quarter. have this I don't have a price for it yet I can look one up if you're interested this is an Austin rally Riley a rookie from 2019 tops archives it's like the silver border and it's numbered out of 99 so to get a price I'll probably jump on eBay and um, and then go just a little lower than eBay that way I don't have to deal with uh, worry about getting the uh, dealing with eBay. I'd rather just ship the people here. So that is some of those. And I think I might have some more Braves cards. I do have some Braves autographs, actually. Um, here's some random Braves cards from older years. Jason Hayward, rookie. Same with the Bowman Chrome. Uh, cup card. Uh, Jason Hayward, first Bowman. I got this uh, 95 Ultra. Trevor Jones, be a quarter. Fred McGriff, hitting machines, quarter. Oh, I don't know. I don't know where that came from. Quarter, Trevor Jones. That looks like 99 upper deck choice. That's an insert. Yard. Yard work. And then this beautiful card. Black Diamond. I think that's 2000 Black Diamond. And then I'll throw out some... Uh, I'll go through these other ones really fast just because they're really basic. Yeah, that chipper looks awesome. I didn't even know that was in the pile. Normally it's my duplicates that are in the pile. There's no way that's a duplicate, but it's in the pile, so it has to go. So I'm just going to go through some of these real quick. These are all Braves cards. My son is covering my mouth. Shipper Jones, Hank Aaron, Matt Weisler, Weasler, uh, Weasler, man, that can't be right. Uh, Foil, Matt Kent, Freeman on that one, Shipper Jones, 06 Fleer. John Smoltz, Anton Simmons, Julio Terrion, Aaron Valera, rookie uh, insert, Andre Uberia. No, buddy, you gotta quit taking stuff when I'm working here, bud. <sighs> yeah, the kids are, kids have been rough. I, uh, I've been really sick, um, not with the Rona. But between me getting kind of sick, this is a Greg Maddox from 95 Ultra Insert. 
between me getting sick and still, you know, doing the kids stuff, it's been running me out more than normal. Uh, Hank Aaron, Shelby Miller, Freddie Freeman, uh, sorry, those Haywards earlier. Greg Maddox, I think that's 96 tops. Uh, that's an actual small two rookie card. These uh, old school 91 upper deck Hank Aaron's. I can do those cheaper than a quarter each. Uh, I don't know who that is. John Smoltz? No, Tom Glavin. Tom Glavin as a kid. Uh, Hank Aaron hologram, which are always fun for the 90s. These are the Rediscover tops that are labeled. Trevor Jones 92 tops, not a rookie. 90 score Glavin, and then this Back to the Future Hayward. Numbered to 149. So let me know if any of that catches your eye or anyone's eyes. Oh! Well, I, uh, I uh, went to work on Monday. Saturday, I lost my sense of taste, which is a big sign of, like, you know, you're getting the bad virus. And um, I got to work Monday. And I, I didn't lose all my taste, just some of it. Throw that Austin Riley there. And um, um, I got to work, and everyone's like, man, you look rough. What is wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't know. And they're like, man, your face is drooping and stuff. Like, it looks like you're having a stroke. So I went to the emergency room, and uh, I had signs of a stroke. And they said it was Bell's palsy. And... Uh, there's really nothing they can do. So my face, and I'm kind of slurring my speech a bit, but my face is all messed up, and uh, um, I can't close my one of my eyes. And uh, uh, there's really not much else to it. I can't taste anything very well. And um, it, for whatever reason, it just drains me of all my energy. I don't know why that is or whatever. We'll put that one there. We'll just set those there for now. Okay, I think that was it for Brave stuff. I have not. I haven't even gone through those cards yet. But I did make a note of it. And I plan on going to do those cards soon. I plan on just doing it on video. Just for something to do. I've been doing a lot of organizing. So I can start opening up. I have like six or seven uh, mail packages waiting for me to open but yeah i will be going through through all that stuff but yeah i will be going through that real shortly and i do have a spot here that might have some heroes cards no, right offhand. Yeah. Yeah, I found a few. Uh, this isn't even part of the uh, boxes I was telling you about. And let's see if I have any. I did find a few Pete Roses here. Yeah, I know, I'd heard of it. I, I've known two people that's had it. But I never really knew what it was, why it happens, what causes it. And really, there's not much info on it. It's, it's like they give you a steroid early on. And then just kind of like, well, hope, hope you uh, make it through. Um, said it could take three weeks, it could take six months, or the, the nerves will never come back. So obviously, I don't want to, I would like for it to go away at some point. It's, I've kind of just lost my appetite, and I'm just kind of tired a lot. That's really the only part that bothers me the most, other than looking like a freak. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's funny, uh, not funny, but I went to the hospital when I told them I was having stroke-like symptoms. I mean, I was rushed in. Like, they don't mess around with that stuff. 
All right, well, so here's some Pete Rose cards I had come across. I didn't even know I had this one. And this one actually does not look bad at all for... I have a 78 tops. And then I have an 86 Fleer Mini. 87 tops manager. 87 tops base. This is true value. 1986. It's like a pop up card that's never been popped up. You open it up and it becomes a pop up card. And then this is Sport Flix. I can barely say that word. Sport Flix. 1986. Pete Rose. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm surprised I had that. I have a, a box of vintage for sale. And this is actually one of the nicer looking vintage ones I had. And uh, I was kind of surprised. Because some of, some of my vintage looks rough. Here, I'll show you. Here's the box it came out of. And here's how a lot of my my 78s are looking. But if anyone's interested, they'd be really cheap. But Because I got stars too, but all the corners seem to be pretty dinged up all across the board. This one is creased up bad. Sparky Lyle. And I don't even know where I've accumulated these. I accumulate cards every so often. And, uh, you know... Some of them are pretty much heavy. Yeah, that Pete Rose looked pretty damn good. Especially compared to my other 78s. J.R. Richard. I kind of want to do a PC of J.R. Richard because he's like the most famous J.R. that I know of that's ever been in baseball. And when I say famous, he really isn't that famous. But he was a he was really great for a short time in the 70s and 80s. Ah! Leia, don't be yelling. I do have some other vintage. Had one. None of them are in mint condition. Sorry, the kids are totally in my way. That uh, I can work out a deal with too. And I do have some nicer looking uh, vintage. But I got them pretty fast here. Conditions vary, of course. And this one's a little rough. Al Smith, a little rough. But. Anything that anyone has any interest, let me know. Billy Pierce. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer, but I think he was kind of a star for the time period. Virgil, Virgil Trucks card that looks like he got hit by several trucks. Cookies. Yeah, cookies. Gil, Gil McDonald. And I do have like some 70s cards of Steve Carlton and stuff. But like I said, some of that stuff is... Uh, some of it's in bad shape. Like I said, I do have some nicer stuff. I just got to pull it out sometime and uh, sort through it all and get going there. All right. Found another Kirby Pocket. I found this Kirby Pocket. I already sold all the Kirby Puckets to him. I wonder if he has that one. Big D's Collectibles. It was in my Seattle Mariners box because of Ken Griffey Jr. I wonder if you'd want that. And I do, I do have some decently uh, good uh, vintage stuff too. I tend to not sell that very often though because I, I feel like all the vintage, the good looking vintage is starting to dry out, dry up. All right, did you have any interest in those Pete Rose cards? If so, I can set those aside, make sure I get to those other ones. I'd rather, you know, not uh, ship several packages, try to make it one good package all together. And then if there's anything anyone else wants to see... I can pull some stuff out. Any player names or team names. I got some stuff. Like I said most of it's lower end, but some short prints, autographs, game used, stuff like that. 
I wonder what uh what set that Griffey comes from. Man, I'm a, I'm a sucker for 90s inserts. Especially the most ridiculous looking ones like holographic and die cuts. And they don't have a lot of value, but man, I really like them. I want to make a, a binder full of like just really nice looking cards like that from the 90s. Like I'm just a sucker for them. But I don't go It's weird how I do my eBay. I don't do searches. I literally go down the uh the list of things on auction that are getting ready to end soon and uh, just start picking stuff that I like. So, I definitely, I got, like I said, I got tons of mail to go through. I ordered um, like seven wax boxes from the 90s, like 94 Donruss. Um, I bought it all from one guy off of uh, a forum. I can't wait to get those. I'll be opening up all those on video. Um, I can't remember what all I bought. I think there was a select box, an upper deck box. Nothing that's going to pull any big time rookies, but definitely it's going to pull some nice, some inserts from back in the day. Hopefully pull some Ken Griffey and Frank Thomas inserts. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they don't have much value now. A lot of those cards had some pretty good value in the 90s. Before we found out they made 7 billion of every single card, even the inserts. <laughs> All right, so I got that sitting to the side. Let me put this away because I'm a little OCD. So I might show off some of the cards I was going to, um, that I was interested in uh, keeping. Pete Rose played for the Phillies at one time, too. So not really Philly Pete Rose cards. No, I don't. All right. Kyle Schwarber. Kyle Schwarber. Let me think. I'm not. I'm not gonna hunt down base because they're they're very deep. But let's see if I have any inserts or uh, parallels. Kyle Schwarber. I did pick up a Cubs card. Um, pulled a Cubs card. I don't know if I pulled it on video or not. I'll have to show it to you. It's interesting nonetheless. None there. No, I'm not seeing any uh, Schwarber. Got one more place to check. No more Schwarber. Thanks, Chris. It's for sale, but I was telling someone earlier, if I don't sell it, I'm perfectly okay with that. So that's a really nice, nice rookie card, in my opinion. All right, so that Cubs card I was referring to, I pulled it out of a uh, tin a few days ago. Of course, I got so much stuff here. Here it is. So those tops uh, tin cans, which I think I did open it on video. It actually comes out of these. Pull it out of this particular one. It's the Chrome, and it's the team's decades best. So it shows the world championship team. That's what, 2016? And it's actually numbered out of 50. So that's pretty nice. Pretty nice for a Cubs fan. But... I let that go for like three dollars. If anyone's interested in that. By the way, hey Chris, I didn't say hey when you came in. I just said thanks for the Lizardo.
Well, a friend talked you out of the one that you got from me, the, the autograph. How do you do that? <laughs> All right, I'll put these back at the moment. All right, is there anything anyone wants to see? I uh, went through all my 2020 stuff and um, decided what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to, to sell. I do have some regular Vachette, Lux, Jordan Alvarez stuff. Um, I think I'm throwing them out there at two bucks a piece. The Bo Bichettes. I think they've cooled down. I think they were at one time going for five bucks a piece. Jordan. Okay, I'll throw it in that stack. I'll throw it with those uh, Pete Rose. Same, I got these Bichette uh, opening day rookie cards too. Yeah, I thought I thought I remembered you liked some uh, Cub stuff. Gavin Lux. I have some uh, Nico Horner rookies. If you already don't have some, which is a very high possibility. Uh, so these are some of the, the heritage that I had pulled that I kind of want to keep. Not a lot. I'm, I bought a lot of heritage. Nolan Arenado, this is the action SP. Uh, it seems like the action ones are more rare than the high numbers. Yeah, I, and that's that's the only reason I'm selling some is because I've accumulated so many. There doesn't seem to be anything to buy right now other than 2020 tops and heritage and there's a few other ones out there. Here's a Fernando Tatis Jr. Oh, this is just short print or high number. I thought that was action, but it's not. Uh, this is one of those uh, stamped cards. I don't know. It's in bad shape. I really wish they would make these stamped cards like cards that are actually in good condition and worth keeping. It drives me crazy that they're, you know, not in good shape. High number, Mookie Bats, Francisco Lindor. And Justin Verlander. So that's some of the heritage I decided to keep. So these are some of the other ones that I pulled this year that I wanted to keep. The Mike Trout. Jordan Alvarez. Uh, Mojo. Kind of froze up there. Jordan Alvarez. Uh, top choice. Mike Trout Gold. Lewis Robert, Gypsy Queen, rookie, uh, fortune teller, and then the regular Gypsy Queen. And then this isn't bad. This isn't a rookie, but that's not a bad card. Pete Alonzo, Mojo, and then the Glaber Torres, Blue Foil. The Blue Foil opening day cards are really cheap. But you only get like four of these Blue Foils out of the boxes. Yeah, I wish they would do something special. Like, I think it would be great if they could use like a really mint card like... Some of the best looking 71 tops cards you can get your hands on and put that stamp on there or frame it or something, you know, because it's hard to find good 71. It's, it's hard to find vintage in general that look really good. So. Take the Pete Mojo. Oh, the Alonzo? I really didn't have that one for sale. <laughs> I was just showing this, these ones off. <laughs> yeah, these are these were the ones I wanted to keep um, out of all the 2020 I bought. It's not mini, but yeah, yeah, that's sorry, Dad, that's one of them I wanted to keep. <laughs> we have similar interests apparently on on what to keep. <laughs> James is uh, in the back here screaming baby shark for some reason. Some of this stuff, this stuff really isn't for, for sale either. Um, I've worked with the rookies. I have so many freaking rookies. Um, this one might be. I might be willing to sell this one. It's Eloy Jimenez now playing. Numbered out of 999. This one maybe not so much. Wander Franco. I thought this was cool. <laughs> Baby Shark. Uh, this would be for sale too. I'll probably let this one go to Vladimir Guerrero. As seen on TV. Uh, these are Rapture. I think they're in the Walmart boxes. This one I want to keep. Casey Mize. And then this one I wanted to keep too. This uh, Pete Alonzo Rapture. Mike Trout. 
Yeah, that Franco. I didn't even know Franco was in the set. Anytime you get... I like anything. Mike Trout. That's not just regular base. Trout cards. Uh, the short print Griffey I pulled um, a few days ago. The Silver Lux. This is a... Uh, it has this, Here's the other Lux. So, they have these parallels. The Silver and the Regular. So, I was looking at prices thinking that the Silver one might be worth quite a bit. It literally goes for like three or four bucks. While this one goes for like two to three bucks. So I thought that was weird. I'm not saying it's rare. But, you know, you think it'd be a little bit more of a premium. Six, seven bucks. But no, this silver one doesn't uh, command much. Maybe that'll change. I don't know. Oh. And I don't have many Wander Francos. I don't even have the one that everyone has. The 2019 Bowman... Is it the Bowman? I think it's 19 Bowman. I don't know. But those those are part of the 2020s I wanted to keep. Uh, I'll pull out a different box here. I do have some vintage cards that are actually in pretty good shape. Something else I plan on selling relatively soon is the Gavin Lux. So I think I might be putting that one up on eBay or uh, maybe selling it in someone a little cheaper than what eBay goes for. At one time, these were going for 130 I think I may have missed the boat on the 130 prices because they seem to have cooled down a bit. Yeah, the paper. That, that's what I'm thinking of. That seemed to be the one that... Uh, a was doing really well there for a while, and everyone had. I, for, I bought a ton of it, and I never came across it for whatever reason or another. <sighs> we'll throw that Lux up there. But I don't know. It's, it was time. I bought a lot of 2020, uh, 2020 product, and I wanted to unload some of it. Just, you know, like I said, I'm not in desperate need of money or anything, but I'd like to recoup some funds. Um, especially now that I'm organizing and getting things together a little better. So, I know someone looked for the Braves earlier, and I just remembered I have a stack of autographs of the Braves that uh, I didn't pull out. But yeah, that Lux is definitely the best uh, pull I've had this year. I pulled that one myself. And uh, definitely, I think that was my first box of 2020 tops this year was at Gavin Lux. And I pulled it on video, which is always kind of cool. And I honestly didn't know how good that card was until I was looking it up on how they do on eBay. Yeah, I mean, I was sitting on a lot of this stuff waiting for the baseball season to start. Hey, get out of there. No, 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 no. Nobody. That's my fault for leaving the closet open. You shouldn't be running in there. It's going to leave something open. Yeah, you got it. You got it. So, I mean, on Gavin Lux, you know, everyone has to kind of get their vibe and feel on how they, uh, who they think will be worth money later, who will do well, who you PC and whatnot. And um, Lux really has only had one outstanding minor league year, which was last year. He only had one power year, which was last year. And that scares me um, when it comes to how well he'll do in the major leagues. So that, I'm not this. I'm not said like sell Gavin Lux, sell Gavin Lux. That's not my philosophy at all. But he worries me a little bit. Now playing for the Dodgers definitely helps hold you know value for him. Playing for a team that most likely will contend. Um, playing second base if he ends up being their second baseman. If he even has just somewhat good career as a second baseman, you know it doesn't. There's not a lot of great hitting second basemen out there. So, I'm hesitant. Same with that Lizardo. Um, pitchers are so risky. But, man, I feel like he could be really, really good. 
That could be worth a good chunk of change someday. So, you know, I'm sure everyone kind of has that dilemma. You know, who who do you hold? Who do you keep? You know, everyone holds certain players too long. And some people, and it used to be me, I used to keep everything. And uh, one thing that kind of burned me is in 2011, I bought up Eric Cosmer, Mike Moustakis like crazy. And uh, they both became really good players. But the amounts of money I paid for some of those cards and then watched them just like tumble. And they're not even bust. They're just not superstars. They're good stars, but... So it's always a, a battle in my own head. That's probably why I ended up at Bell's Palsy, because I'm always stressing out about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way with grading. Um, I'm always hesitant. You know, you add your 8, 9, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, whatever everyone's paying. Uh, it seems to range depending on who you go through. And uh, it's almost the same thing. I'd hate to, you know, you've seen all the Josh Hamilton slabs, you know, that you can pick up for four and five bucks. That doesn't even, you know, how much you paid to grade it and stuff. I guess I'm, I, I might be really thinking about it way too hard. Like, I probably shouldn't be thinking about it that hard. But, uh, you know, some of the best cards, you know, this Gavin Lux, I want graded. Like, I would love to grade it. I'd rather sell it graded. Thinking they would get a good grade or keep it graded both ways. Same for both of these cards. I would love to get them graded. I really hate how long it takes. Yeah. And by the time you find out they're no good, they've not been hot for a while. <laughs> you know? And a part of me is like, just shut up. Get the cards and keep them. Just keep them. And, uh, you know, then you don't have any, like, too many regrets i mean all the people that lost out on trout you know who knew mike trout was going to be mike trout in 2011 you know austin riley came up really hot last year and it really cooled off towards the end of the year what are you doing over there bud you doing good but yeah I, i've heard so many horrible mike trout stories as in oh i sold 10 flagship rookies for two bucks a piece you know, you know, like, I've never had one. I don't have, I do have one Mike Trout story, but it's not a rookie story. It's the second year uh, Tops card. I ended up with the camo. I think it was the camo. I think it was number the 50. And my philosophy was when I pulled it, I pulled it out of a retail pack. I said, this card that's now worth 20 bucks will never be worth this much again. Because he's a hot player right after a hot rookie year. And I don't know what it's worth now. I need to find out what it goes for. But I sold it for like 22, 23 bucks, maybe 27. I guarantee it sells for a hell of a lot more than that. Yeah, that's true. S send them in when they're hot, and then by the time the turnaround comes, the next big uh, prospect's the hot one now. <laughs> There's, I have a few Acuna rookies, uh, flagship, two of them. And, you know, I think he'll stay hot. I, you know, I want to get, I'd like to get those graded, but, man, it's hard to, it's one when you, you could grade cards and know you're going to lose them for two months, but these weights at five, six, seven, eight months, that's when you're like, uh, plus the pandemic thing now, you're just like, man, you're going to forget they even exist. And plus, I want like a minimum grade, like, I really don't want anything under a nine, and uh, I know there's an option to do that. I've just never done it. 2018. So we're around 2003 is when you are in it before. I've always been in cards, but I go through waves where I'm really in the cards. And then not so much. And then, way, you know, in a lot of, in my early 20s, I was broke a lot. So. What's up, Sam? I got some low-end stuff for sale if uh, you want me to show you anything. If not, we'll just hang out and talk anyway. So, yeah, so yeah, lots have changed. It's been so drastic. And then um, I don't collect basketball, but, man, basketball seems like a crazy thing right now with the values of those cards. 
And something I did read about Mike Trout in general is that he's on pace. I if I I, I really think this is what I read. He's on pace to get uh, more hits than Pete Rose, assuming he plays that long. He had more hits than Pete Rose did at this time in his career, and he has more home runs than Hank Aaron did at this point in his career. So depending, you know, he's a big dude. Big dudes don't always, uh, you know, get old well. So there's a chance none of those things could happen, but it's kind of scary to imagine if he stays healthy and keeps up production. And, and plays in the 40, 41, 42, he might be able to knock out 4,000 hits, 700 home runs. Then what would that rookie card do? I mean, that rookie card would be like the Michael Jordan rookie card, in my opinion. Maybe not so much. I don't know. Mike Trout just doesn't seem like... I mean, Mike Trout, to me, doesn't even seem like the superstar Griffey was, so... It's really weird. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm a little different with vintage cards. You know, I could throw in some vintage cards for sixes, sevens. A lot of my my nice vintage cards, as in Hall of Famers, are like fives because that's what I can afford. But um, I'd almost send any any historical card just to get it authenticated for the most part, get it graded. But here, this Mickey Mantle is real now, not a chance. It's fake. So, yeah, it's it's always a – oh, really? And it's one of those things I don't follow basketball, but if I known it was a big thing, it would be a lot easier for me to buy basketball and sell basketball because I don't have a personal attachment to it. But I, and I don't collect basketball, but I picked up the Luka Doncic and the Zion Williamson rookie cards. I picked those up pretty cheap. Just uh, because they were cheap. And uh, I don't know anything about basketball, but I'm probably going to sit on them until they either become consistent superstars or they're nobodies. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Oh, uh, let's see if I can find it. I, uh, let's see if I can find it in here. So, I used to buy cards from someone named Missouri Cards, which some of you guys might be YouTube, subscribe to them and stuff. I'm not sure who is and who isn't. Um, but uh, he had these unopened packs, from the fit, not unopened packs, repackaged packs, that apparently were repackaged in the late 70s. Um, by a guy and a son that bought all these cards from Tops and repackaged them and then sold them at like gas stations or something like that. I might not have the story fully correct. So he was selling these packs that would show the front and the back of the card, you know, for X amount of money. And I ended up buying quite a bit of them over the time. And these are some of the cards I got. And these are, to me, these are some of the best looking ones, but there are a lot of off-centered stuff. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Griffey, I wish Griffey would have stayed in Seattle and not got hurt. You know, even with that injury he had, I think it was 94, 95, where he broke his wrist. Even with that injury and the, the games he missed, I think he still had a chance to break, break some records. Yeah, I really like Missouri. Um, I actually just bought something from him recently, and uh, he shipped it yesterday, and it's all vintage. And I can't wait to get it and can't wait to open it. So I still buy from him sometimes, um, just random things. He, he, it's not from his videos or anything like that, but he's always had some nice stuff. But this, this is some of the stuff I've gotten from him. This is all vintage. And the thing about these is they're not written on, you know, they're not perfect. A lot of them have pretty sharp corners. And all of these top-loaded vintage cards I've gotten from him. Everything that I got in those packs, I top-loaded right away. And, uh... You know, this is like this is a really nice card. Um, I got a really maze from him that a 61 tops that I had uh, graded that he sent in and get graded. They came back a five, and we thought it would come back higher, but so these are these are pretty common dudes, but some of them are in really good shape. 
And that's why I kept buying those those repacks he had. You know, because they don't look fondled to death. You know, a lot of the a lot of the mistakes are uh, from the centering and stuff. Yeah, Griffey is easily my all time favorite swing. Easily. And I try to replicate it. Even now at thirty nine years old when I'm in the backyard with the kids, I try to replicate it and I just can't do it. I try. I look all rough doing it. Yeah, Missouri Cards is on YouTube. And it's it's exactly it's Missouri Space Cards. And he 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 has he has a lot of videos. He doesn't go live anymore. He used to go live all the time and sell breaks and stuff, but now he's kind of toned down on that. But man, he pulled some unbelievable stuff. He buys a lot of retail. And uh like just recently in one of his videos, not even a few days ago, I was 2019 tops. He ended up with a bunch of Christian Yellick stuff, uh, different variations and stuff like that, all out of retail. It is crazy what he can pull sometimes. Clem Labine. So some of these, some of these, you know, this, this beats all the vintage I have in my cell box. My cell box, it looks like people were chewing on them. And I think some of these cards, they, just have really, they have really good bright color on some of them. It's, it's looking kind of rough in my... Yeah, look him up. It, it's some really good stuff. He's got some really good stuff. And I'm hoping he'll start doing breaks again soon. Because he used to do these breaks where he'd like pick out the repacks. And you're like, let's just... I'll throw an example. It'd be like a pack of 1959 tops, a pack of 1963 tops, a pack of 1971 tops. And like a 75 tops pack, and then do it by division, doing the old school divisions, not the new divisions. And uh, that's how I ended up with a lot of these. Some of them were packs that I bought. He opened on camera, and then some of them were actual like breaks. So like this Cubs card, you know that blue. You can really see the blue on that card. So I do want to go through these. There are some of these I'd be willing to sell, but some of these. Are centered so good, and they're like great. Some of the cards are grade worthy, but I might not get graded. The one thing I hate about grading cards is, um, I don't know, it's hard to display them in a sense. This was an interesting one a freaking president of the American League and the National League. It's a little off center. Card number 100. <laughs> And I've seen him pull out of these repacks. Like I said, I got a, uh, I've I've gotten a really maze in the middle of a pack. You know, you always want to put your best players on the top of the pack. But I ended up getting a 61 tops really maze in the middle of the pack. Joe Nux Hall. Johnny Antonoli. But yeah, I mean, I wish. Like I said, I bought something from. I bought some. Like I just kind of. Send him a message, or he'll say, "Hey, you want to buy anything right now?" And I'll be like, "Hey, like this last time, I was like, I'm interested in some vintage. I said I was interested in some uh, Kansas City Athletics and old Kansas City Royals cards if he had any." And uh, I think he was pretty busy, and he sent me back. He's like, "I haven't had time, man. How about if I just sell you a chunk of a chunk of cards?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's always done me really well, so I have no doubt that. Um, I'll like what he sends. See, I'm gonna start a uh, KCA's PC, and I think this would look this would look cool. Vic Power. It's a little off center, a little, but it, I think I think this stuff looks amazing. Frank Larry, Gene Baker. I think, and I don't know why. It seems like these Cub cards with the blue hats really pop. Johnny Cux, which is a hilarious name. Actually got two of those. They're both off center but in different directions. And there are a few. Uh, some of them have uh, print imperfections on the front. Larry Jackson. This one's pretty pretty far off center. Detroit Tigers. And I'm trying to remember some of the cards I've seen other people pull. Um, I think I've seen a Robin Yount get pulled. You know, I think they said it. I think he said it was 1978, 1979. 
that uh, <laughs> these packages were put together. So George Brett, Robin Yount, Gary Carter weren't like superstar names yet. So like Robin Yount, I, I think was just thrown in there. No one was like, oh, oh my God, there's Robin Yount rookie in there. It's another A's card, Billy Hunter. Marv Grissom. This one's funny because it looks rough, but it's it's ink. Ink from the printing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a good seller. I'd recommend him to anyone. He's always asking me if I know anyone that uh, is interested in buying. Especially buying a lot of product. Like, I think he, uh, he makes some good packages. And I've opened some on camera. Actually, I think I've opened them all on camera. They just are kind of sporadic. You know, buy from them every few months. And he's, I mean, he's straightforward. He, he's never, one thing about him, he's never trying to push, push sales like crazy. Milt Graft is another athletics card. That guy chokes up big time on the bat. Milt Graft. Norm Zuchin. Zuchin. These, uh, these Cubs uniforms say Chicago Cubs patches, you know, patched all the way across the uniform. Interesting. The Detroit Tigers. Jack Sanford. And I said none of these, none of these guys are big names. I do have some. I did pull some Hall of Famers and stuff. Let me see where they be. Let's see if there's anything else worth showing. Got this Herb, Herb Score. He's not a Hall of Famer, but he's a star from the time. Let's see, let's see. Um, this was one of them that I pulled from one of his packs. Yeah, and I mean, like, I, I typically spend, like, 50, 100, something like that, which is quite a bit. Um, but he also has just, like, individual cards that I'm sure if I'm like, hey, do you have any... Nice looking Frank Robinson, for instance. I'm sure. I'm sure he has something good for sale. Oh, uh, let's see. I think this was pulled out of a pack. Speaking of Frank Robinson, 59 tops. Corners are really good. It's just just off center slightly. Yeah, I I. What what my sell here for tonight was really. Is to sell some stuff and then buy some vintage, <laughs> buy some good vintage. I guess I buy a lot of, a lot of vintage. I know some of the packages upstairs that have come in the mail that I haven't opened yet. Some of it's vintage, <laughs> but you know I can't afford the really mazes, the Hank Aaron's. I know one of them, some 1980 tops cards, which I don't think is considered vintage. I don't think I got this one from them. Those corners are a little worn. Some of these that, um, or other vintage cards. I got this from them. And um, it wasn't out of one. It might have been one of the packs. I don't know. I did not buy it out of the pack, though. Mickey Mantle. Palmer's Best. And the same with the Whitey Ford. But, yeah, I would, for the most part, I would sell so much of my new stuff in order to turn around and buy nice-looking vintage. Here's another one I think I got from them. It's Rod Carew. Cup card. It's got like a mess, one messed up corner up there, like fuzzy, and then a little off-centered. And the guy that bought all these cards and repacked them or whatnot, as long as everything's true, you know, if the guy's being honest with his word, it seemed like a lot of the cards he got from Tops were like defective and 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 centering in general. I mean, there's definitely a few really nice nice cards, but. Yeah, yeah, I did, and I still have it uh, set aside. What I like to do is uh, try to put a grade on it, and then I install it into my database. Like, um, there's also uh, one of the cards you sent me. I can't remember which one it is. I have it set aside. I'll have to look for it. it was really nicely centered. Really nicely centered. And sometimes, I mean, even these, I know all of these didn't come from him. But then sometimes I have children remembering. I know this one came from him. And this is, 
minus the centering, this is totally gradable. It's just that centering that makes it not gonna not gonna do crazy good. Gaylord Perry. I mean that's a pretty bad card, like he looks so confused in this picture. Uh, this I, I remember getting this this from him in a pack. I uh, I don't know if I could say his name right. Showing Deanst Deanst. But it, and I said it's a great card. Just it's just kind of off center, off center enough to not get graded. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I was kind of hoping to accumulate enough duplicates of some of this stuff to resell them. Yeah, the corners look pretty good on a lot of them. And that's what that's what always kept me buying these. And honestly, I was kind of scared he would just run out one day. And that day may have come. There's a Harmon Killer Brew, 73 tops. Looks pretty good. Seventy-one, or I'm sorry, seventy-five tops. He had seventy-five tops packs. I bought it, quite a bit of those, trying to pull a Georgia Brett rookie. And I, I'm pretty sure someone did. I think he pulled. I think he got two, uh, two Robin Yount rookies out of some of those packs. Now this one's funny because this was repacked. And once again, the corners are unbelievable, but it's like faded on one side, which is really odd. You know, it's like right down the middle at some point. It. The color change, maybe in the ink or something. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I got this one from him too. Dave Winfield, but you can see the roller roller went down and left a like a wheel of ink. But still, I I, I like I like seeing um, really good corners because man, some of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at least you know if it's uh, off center. You know, that doesn't mean it was all roughly handled and whatnot. They may have literally just come off the press and literally not been touched. So that's an interesting White Sox uniform with the red. The red and white instead of the, the black. Let's see. And this isn't all of them. This is just a few, few highlights. I, remember I got this one from them too. And really, I when when we would open these up, I didn't care who I got. You know, I just I wanted Hall of Famers. So I think I got a pretty good mix. I've been showing off a good mix of players. You know, of course you want your really mazes and your Hank Aaron's and stuff, but when they when they package these up, they did have quite a good mix of of different different guys. I could find the. Uh, I could find the really maze that I pulled. Let's see. These are uh, two cards that I've gotten out of packs from them. That, uh, um, he's like, dude, totally get these cards graded. So this is Jim Perry, which isn't a Hall of Famer, but a star. You know, if you can pull a, a 9, 8, 9, or 10 out of any player, vintage-wise, you're, you're going to make some good money. This came back a 5. Um, we really don't understand. <laughs> Of course it doesn't tell you I mean, it's slightly off center but the color's good i don't see any obvious imperfections on the front and um, they don't really check the back all that well you know back slightly off center but uh it came back to five so we were thinking i was thinking i don't know what he was thinking but he's like dude get this great i was thinking an eight and you know so it wasn't an eight not a big deal though you know it's still a nice card 
Yeah, Jim Perry was a consistent all-star in the uh, 50s and 60s. But that that's about it. He was a whole and then this is the really maze that had pulled. And uh, it came back a six, which is good. You know, I'd have been really weary if it came back five. But we were thinking seven. Seven, you know, kind of hoping for an eight. You know. So, you know, he puts in cards every few months. A huge order to uh, PSA. So it took a while. You know, it always does. But these are two cards. He's like, dude, go ahead and do it. You know, and I paid. Like, you know, he didn't do it for free. He's not crazy. And I don't remember what I paid. Like $10 a card, $9, something, you know, relatively cheap. Part of a group price. And uh, he shipped them to me uh, as soon as they got back with other cards I purchased. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this is a $100 card graded like this. 100 120 something like that. Last time I checked, it had been a while. Um, I think the pack was like 50 bucks or something like that. And uh, yeah, I like it. That's, that's really my only good really maze card. Yeah. And... I don't have the eyes for it. I think he does because he does um, he does break reveals and uh, most of the stuff he gets come back nines. Most of them come back tens. A lot of modern stuff I say, not vintage per se, but I think he has a good eye. And uh, I mean, even someone that I think does really well is sometimes just off. It's, it seems like it's a crapshoot sometimes. It's just really crazy. But if it was up to me, like. I wish you can get cards graded, but then not have to have them encased. But I know that that just can't be a thing. Because I'd love to put some of these in. Uh, I like the magnetic holders. For one, I think they look a lot sharper and nicer. And sometimes I like putting them in binders. So, but yeah, I totally understand about the worry with grading. I totally get that. I tried to, like, jump on eBay and, like buy cards that are worth buying ungraded and getting them graded and I just I don't think it's a thing I can do I don't have that want and that stress level some people I think are really good at it but I just I don't have it all the years I've been messing with cards I just maybe I'm not detail oriented enough when it comes to condition so that's uh that's my thing on that. But yeah, I totally get it with the whole grading thing. Yeah, I like the SGC holders. Uh, I think I think I, I like the black. And uh, I think I only have one SGC card. Yeah, I only have the one. I mean, it's for a tobacco card. And this would look better in a new uh, a new sleeve. This sleeve's a little dusty and old. But yeah, I like the, the black. And even now, even their labels and stuff, I think are really have the really big number. Like if this is a two, it says two really big. You know, this is a lot of almost like fine print. But I almost wish that like all the companies would put the details on the back. And keep it really like basic in the front. But yeah, I really like the black. It's like I wish I could get everything to look more like this. And I guess SGC isn't a bad company at all. So yeah, this is my only tobacco card. I, this was literally like 25 bucks um, a few years ago. Now it's hard to get one for 25 bucks ungraded. Let alone graded. Like I said, every now and then I come across really good deals on eBay. I think it's the way I do eBay. I don't go searching for anything. I literally get on. I say, uh, I go to baseball cards. I go to ending, ending soonest. And I go to only the auctions. I don't look at buy it now. And I scroll down to like three minutes later. And I literally just look at the picture of all the cards until I see something that catches my eye. And normally I do this at like between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. So I think every now and then I get some really good deals for that reason. There's a lot less traffic. Um, last night I got a 1985 Topps Tiffany Roger Clemens rookie card. It says it's Topps Tiffany. 
Now, when I get it, there's a giant chance it's not, and someone doesn't know what they're talking about. But I got it for nine bucks. Hopefully, it's a really Tiffany, because I've bought some cards that weren't exactly what they said they were, and uh, that's one of the packages I have coming. Um, I bought some 1980 Topps Hall of Famers. Uh, I think Rod Carew, Johnny Bench. You can take some names out, put some names in. I don't remember who I bought, but they looked amazing to me, and I got those for about a buck twenty a piece one night on uh, on eBay. I, I'm sure the package is here. It said it delivered. So I'm pretty sure the package is here upstairs. I just need to bring them down and get on video and open them up. But I've been I've been up late a lot of nights, so I, I try to hit eBay. Like, and you can even do your search. You don't have to be up at 3 a.m. to do the searches during that time frame. Yeah, there's a good chance I open the. Uh, there's a good chance I open that package up of any of them, and they're just not quite what they look like. So I try to look really hard though, because you know a lot of people will like collect certain players or certain sets, and they'll take a lower grade until they find a better grade. And it's almost like that's a waste of money and time. I'm trying not to do that. I'd really like to get the right grade, as in not graded card, but the raw card that's gradable, but I'm not actually going to send it in the grade. But yeah, I've been burned a few times on eBay. Um. Once was a 1990 Topps Frank Thomas rookie card, and it said PSA, and it said Mint. But it didn't show the label. It, it, like, cut it off right here, and all it said was Mint. It said Mint, Frank Thomas, PCA, or something along those lines. It was, like, three bucks, and I bid and won it for three bucks, and I got it, and it was a five. And uh, I went and looked at the auction again, and it was totally an illusion. He totally made it look like that for a reason. He probably couldn't even get three bucks for it before. How much do you think this is worth? I don't know. I can jump on uh, eBay real quick. That's kind of how I go off, go off any value anymore. I do have a subscription to Beckett. Um... Because I kind of organize my cards based on uh, book value. But I don't honestly believe that my cards will sell for those values. Alright. Slowly kind of putting stuff away just so I keep myself organized. Alright. So. Yeah, I guess I can kind of show you what I am seeing. All right, so, but yeah, I have a Beckett subscription that uh, I keep. What is that, 1909? Oh, this will be book value here. I was going to jump on eBay, too. T206. His name is Fielder Jones, which is a very baseball name. James, get out of that closet, buddy. Hey, get out of the closet. You know that's the baseball closet. You know that's the baseball closet. All right, Fielder Jones. I guess I have to log in to get a price. Man, I'd love, like, 1909, the TTO. I'd love to buy more of that stuff. Like I said, I get so hyped up with the new stuff that... So low, low back at 60, high back at 100, and I think you can click on it. Oh, that said, there's two different variations, hands at hips. That's not this one. Go back here. wonder if one's worth more than the other. But yeah, I don't even care if they're commons or not on these. And to get one that grades more than the one, I think is perfect. Because so many of them... Look like they'd been eaten up through a lawnmower. So I could have sworn you can go in here and they'll have a value for uh, the graded version. Maybe I'm clicking on the wrong thing. It's been a while since I've done this. Oh, right here, I believe. So this says book value. A two is a is good condition. So this says forty dollars in this condition. So, 
that's one way I get my values, but obviously I don't trust Beckett, so I'll always trust eBay. Now, if we find a two, I, d I doubt we'll find an exact two of this particular card, so I'd normally go for something similar. This is a major league baseball card, like this is for the White Sox. There's tons of minor league cards for these T206 cards. So we'll say, we'll just say T206 Fielder Jones. I mean, there's parts of me that literally want to like take out $50 a month and just buy another one of these cards. Like every month buy one. Have 12 by the end of the year, 24 in two years. All right, so there's 37 for sale. I like to go, in, and you probably know all this, so I'm not trying to treat you like you don't know what you're doing. But this just kind of shows you what I do. Go into sold. I mean, this one's not even graded, and it went from 129.50. This one's a four. It went for a, almost a hundred. This three went for 60, so 40 might be legit. Here's the one with the his hands on his hips, 26.99. 55 for this two. This was a buy it now, so someone actually paid 55 for it. He did some lighting to his, because that looks really bright. So 40 doesn't seem too far off on this particular card. That's not always the case. And in this one, this one's not graded. This went for 13.50. I think I'd, I'd damn near buy that for 13.50 ungraded. My only concern is fakes, but it's a little wrinkled up and stuff. He's definitely got some crazy looking hair and lipstick. I guess I never noticed it. I will admit, though, I'm really weird with eBay. Like, for whatever reason, I, I don't have something in mind. Like, I'm not like, I want to buy a Cal Ripken rookie today, and I go find the best Cal Ripken rookie. It's always really random. Like, I'll just be looking and be like, hey, this card looks cool. I didn't know I wanted a 1960 Alcala line, but that looks cool. Yeah, this one, that has it's the same player, but his hands are on his hips. 14. And this one looks way better, and it's $28.50. Maybe I should look at more Buy It Now stuff. I never look at Buy It Now. I always feel like it's too much. It does say that it's wrinkled. So close up, we'll probably see the wrinkle. The listing has ended. Yeah, I can kind of see. Yeah, I see a wrinkle there. But on these, I mean, that, I, I like the color, too. Like, it's got some really nice color to it. And uh, I think the Cubs were around. Maybe you could just work on, like, some common Cubs players. And I don't know if you have Beckett online, but something you can do, something that I've done. If they say they have Kansas City. Kansas City didn't have a major league team back then. So I'm assuming it was a minor league team. But I thought about making the, uh, like, just focusing on the Kansas City T206 cards. Like, I think that'd be really badass to complete that. It's a attainable goal. You don't have to worry about any crazy Hall of Famers. But on the Beckett thing. Yeah, I think a lot of people. I'm logged out again. I think a lot of people uh, like like when I want to buy it, when I want to put something up for buy it now, I don't ever do it. But if I did. It would always be like more than the the ending, the most recent ending options. Plus, uh, when 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 someone does buy it now as an option, they uh, they make less money because there's a higher percentage taken out for eBay. All right, so you can come over here to teams and pick your team. So I'll pick Cubs. It looks like there's 31 Cubs cards, so you can just. Highlight it or not highlight it, but check mark the box and hit apply, and it'll just only show the Cubs cards. And you can do this even if you don't have a subscription, um, it won't give you the prices, but it'll tell you. Oh, wow, there's some. Oh, there's definitely some Hall of Famers in the Cubs, Cubs set Mordecai Brown. 
And of course, these are high prices, as in. Woo, man. There's an $800 one, Johnny Evers. I think he's a Hall of Famer. But then you got this. I'm sure this is a common Johnny Clean. 100 bucks. Like, maybe you could find a. Yeah, I forgot the Cubs had uh, had some had some players back in the day. And a lot of these are variations. Orville Overall. A horrible name. He has a hand at face, hands at waist, portrait. Three different variations. Baby Shark. Jimmy Shepard. There's another $800 one, Joe Tinker. I think... I think getting some graded, uh, graded, uh, especially SGC, like, I think that would look awesome in a frame. Like, you've got the whole team set. Even in the, even in the SGC or the PSA in frame, I think it would look badass. Because if I had something like that, I wouldn't be selling it. I wouldn't be breaking it apart to sell. Out of my curiosity, I want to see what the uh, Kansas City one looks like. But I, I talk about how I do uh, – yeah, the, I, I, when you watch the uh, Ken Burns special from this time period, you really find out how many – how great the Cubs were at one time. I mean, those names are so far away, so long time ago. Uh, Kansas City. I wonder if he'll give a team name. This doesn't say Kansas City at all. So maybe I'm just mistaken. Buffalo Bisons, Boston Braves, St. Louis Cardinals only had seven. The Cubs had the second most, 31. The New York Giants, New York Yankees only had 21. Brooklyn, Boston Red Sox, seven. Boston Braves, Buffalo Bisons. I could have sworn that I saw someone with a uh, Kansas City team set. Um, and I just assumed they were all minor leaguers. Well, hold on, Philadelphia Athletics. Now I'm just Philadelphia Athletics. And some of these don't have a team name. So maybe that's part of it. Does this have a picture? There's no picture either. You would also think the 1909 set would literally have every picture being in such an iconic set. Oh, well, what if I do an eBay search for 1909 Kansas? I just want to make sure I'm not crazy. I could have sworn Kansas City had some. Nah, that's not what I wanted. Put in T206 there. Oh, well, I was going to say earlier, because of my sporadic buying on eBay, I never have goals. And um, maybe I should have some goals. Yeah, this is minor league baseball. Click on this guy. This one's already at 40 bucks. Yeah, that's definitely a Kansas City card. It says Kansas City on the bottom, so they just don't have them labeled in Beckett. I wonder what the team name was back then. But yeah, I know it's not a major league team. So that's interesting. I just wanted to confirm that there was actually a Kansas City team. Even it being minor league, I think that'd be cool to, to collect. Man, that one's already at 40 bucks. Let's see how many have sold for. Sold, sold. See what I could have gotten stuff for if I actually did any work. That's a PSA 5 for 160. That's got some color to it too. At least from the picture here, it's pretty bright red. I can get a stupid thing to pop up. Man, he looks like a guy from Kansas City. Hellman. I'm just kidding. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but... I can see that guy being from Kansas City. He has some nice, nice flat hair. Nice. Part right down the middle. I just can't put together 
I can't put together some fives though. I can't afford that. Blue Ritter, this was a two. But see, they look so much better in an SGC case. There's an SGC. This guy looks like he's killed someone before. I don't know if he has or not, but he he's not looking friendly. That's still a cool card, but it's in rough shape. That was that sold for seventy? Really? He's got the collar popped and everything. It's still pretty cool, man. I don't know how you can play baseball with a collar like that. Every swing, every throw. So let's take a look at some of these Cubs cards. See what they've been running at, especially with some of these $800 book value ones. Yeah, these are sold. Um, I hate when it says best offer accepted because you really don't know what they paid. So this was best offer. That's $30 crossed out. So at one time, this one was $30. It probably sold for a lot less. It's got some good color to it. It's got some paper loss on the front. Yeah, the SGC case just makes them pop. You would think like PSA or something would like, it sounds like a total gimmick, but could make like colored cases. You know, they could probably charge another dollar or two per card. Like it'd be kind of neat. Like for the Royals, for instance, you know, make all your Royals cards have a blue frame around it. Or, or the Royal blue, have the Cubs have like, you know, the Cubs blue. I bet people would pay extra to make their, make their stuff look a little more uniform and nice. So that was thir that was most likely less than thirty ungraded. Let's see if we get the see if we see any SGC twos. Johnny Shepherd, Frank Chance. That one sold for seventy five. It looked like it'd been burnt. This was a a two. This is that guy, overall, overall. It's really hard to say with the Bell's palsy going on. Orville, overall. That's such a horrific name. He's wearing his collar correctly. Yeah, this is a two. PSA. Mm. Mm. This is cool. Like, I think it'd be cool to, like, sell my Gavin Lux autograph and get something like that. Watch Gavin Lux become the next Mike Trout. <laughs> Greatest second baseman of all time. Man, I'm having some slow uh, internet right now. Probably because I'm on my phone streaming. Here's Johnny Evers. I think he's a Hall of Famer. That's a five. 440 bucks. I think it's crazy that this sells for 440 bucks and the guy still has to charge 10 bucks to ship it. 10 bucks. Man, that should be free paying that kind of money. That's just me. If I ever do auctions on eBay, that's a high price. Like over 100 bucks. I just put free shipping. This guy... Kind of like, looks like Dale Dribble from Hank King of the Hill. It's really skinny. He has like a, the Chicago's put on their uniform different like that. You know, behind a million cards. Yeah. PSA, like, it would literally be like something that you just know you're not going to see for a good year. Something that you're going to. Keep in your private collection for a long time <laughs> and just pray for the best. I don't know too much about football. I wouldn't mind picking up some like Chiefs cards. Um, but I believe, you know, deal with what you know. I know a lot more about baseball than I do football. 
I, I have some football cards. I buy football cards every now and then, like packs and stuff. And I I collected football pretty good in 2010 or 11, whenever Tim Tebow was a rookie. Ended up buying a lot of Tim Tebow stuff. We all know how, how, that, uh, how that went. This one's a PSA 3, Joe Tinker. 300 bucks, 312 bucks. Oh, they, they even have a 1.5. This is Mordecai Brown. I think he also went by three finger Brown, four finger Brown. I don't even remember. He doesn't have five fingers. That's all I truly know about this guy. Yeah, Jordan's gone got, got nuts. I don't have, I have like two Michael Jordan cards and then I have like five or six that are in really bad shape. And, uh, I always told myself, like, I don't collect basketball, but I'm, anytime I see Michael Jordan, I'm just going to pick some up. And I never did. And I totally should have. Because even now, even with it selling well, I think I'd rather keep it. And there's a lot of speculation. I don't know if you've seen it floating around about because of this Michael Jordan documentary, is this going to get people paying attention to Ken Griffey again? And, you know, because at the time, Griffey was your baseball guy. Jordan was your basketball guy. I don't know who the football guy was, really. I can't, I can't zoom in on that. That's odd. That's 1.5 from Mordecai Brown. Showing three different backs for some reason. That's odd. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like maybe I should pick up an 89 upper deck Griffey PSA 9 because I can't afford the 10. I don't even know if I can afford the 9, but pick one up before maybe, you know, just people remembering back to the 90s. People be like, oh yeah, I remember having Griffey. Griffey was the the best player of the 90s. Now, I think there's a difference between Griffey and Jordan. Griffey could have been the greatest player of all time. And I... I I don't think he is because of injuries and stuff. But Jordan. What are you doing, Leia? Hey, 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 turn it down. Oh, about a year ago, 60 Jordans. Yeah, I bet they I bet they do a lot better now, too. I've been seeing people posting. Uh, I'm in a face, Facebook group, and a lot of Jordan baseball cards are popping up again. And I don't know if they're taking off. I've always wanted a, a, a good collection of the Michael Jordan baseball cards. But once again, since I don't really focus on anything and I just buy it random. Because I remember in 94, Jordan, Jordan baseball rookies were hot. Frank Wild. There's a Joe Tinker that looked like it was on fire. Best offer accepted. Ooh, that looks rough. That'd be the only way for me to afford this guy, though. <laughs> Whose autograph was that, Jordan? Uh, I know, and I, I think you were talking about Jordan, but one thing I seem to notice with Griffey autographs is that the Cincinnati Red autographs tend to be cheaper than the Seattle Mariner autographs. And I can understand why. I would... Yeah. I would totally want a Mariner's autograph for whatever reason. I don't know if it's from memory. But I'd rather have a Mariner's autograph of Griffey than a uh, Reds one, as horrible as that sounds. Granted, if you're in Cincinnati, you probably want a Reds one, but I'll always remember Griffey as a, a Mariner. That's just how it is. Here's a BVG, which I'm not a fan of these uh, these cases either. These are twice as thick as PSA and SGC. And they got some weight. I had quite a bit of them at one time. They, they weigh down a box. Oh, there we go. This is Old Mill. I think that's the, the back. I think Old Mill aren't very... Very easy to get. Old Mill. It's interesting stuff. Oh no, it's a 
King Griffey bat? Yeah, that would be awesome. I wish I had a, a good bat to display. I do not. But it'd be cool if I did. I bought a house years ago that had like an old baseball bat in it. And it, ha it had some player's name on it. I can't remember who it was. And it was a really old bat. And for a while, we thought maybe it was actual someone's bat from, from like the 40s or 30s. Come to find out, it wasn't. <laughs> Long story short, it was a fake name. But it was pretty exciting thinking that it possibly could have been. Now, I forget the guy's name. Um, I picked baseball cards. I was actually wanting to see what a bat, like actual bat goes for. I also, I like, uh, of course I don't have the money for them. I like autographed jerseys, like framed jerseys. But that's a whole, that's a whole different ball game. That's a whole, whole level, level of money that I'm not, not hitting right now. There's an autographed Griffey bat. Looks like it's autographed in silver. Big stick. I don't, I think that means it's a smaller bat. C O A. Black big stick. Uh, superb new condition. Autograph paint in person, which is scary. So I can't do in person or C O A O A. I can make some C O A's right now. So that might be why that one is so cheap. I guess I should check for sold. But if I go to Royals Fan Fest every year, I'd love to get a nice bat and then get it autographed by someone good, good, like someone great. Like, I don't want a Kevin Seitzer autograph bat. Like, it'd be cool. I wouldn't turn down a Kevin Seitzer autograph bat, but, you know, I'd rather have Bo Jackson, Salvador Perez. Yeah, look at that. You got a doggy? And you got Krusty the Clown. <laughs> and for some reason, they play. This one sold for two sixty five. That says PSA COA. Two sixty five. Kim Griffey Jr. has the PSA DNA hologram and matching CO. Yeah, I'll lay you, buddy. Do you have any uh, autographed bats or jerseys? I have no bats. I have a uh, one autographed jersey that I actually got this year at Royals Fan Fest of Bobby Bobby Witt Jr. Like I bought a jersey for myself, an unnamed one, and uh, one of the lines I was in was Bobby Witt, and I'm like, well, Bobby Witt could be a big star one day. Like out of everyone there. That's the name that could be. So I had it autographed. And uh, I still have it in my closet here. I haven't done anything with it. I was supposed to do a video of it. Um, of all the... Uh, all the uh, I got a ton of autographs from there. And I just never made the video. I had to like write down everyone's name. Because there's so many minor leaguers that I'd never heard of. Yeah, they are really expensive. Like I said, I would, I'd, I'd love one of... To me, the big three would have been Griffey, Frank Thomas, and Cal Ripken. Those were like my three favorite players as a kid. But of course, I'd want any Hall of Famers. I like the look of really old school jerseys. So I'd like an old, like, I don't know, New York Giants, uh, Willie Mays autographed. I mean, we're talking, we're talking way bigger money than even... Even though of the the basic ones I want. <laughs> now I have seen uh, like lower end player jerseys go for like 50, 60 bucks. Uh, that I thought were kind of cool. Like let me think. Let me think. Let's do uh, like a lower end Hall of Famer. Let's say. Uh, let's say Raleigh Fingers. I typed this in. It's probably going to bring up a bunch of auto or uh, baseball cards. And I've even thought about contemplating buying some uh, some of these. Like this one here. 
Like, I really like the old school. Oh, they have a Padres one, too. Okay. So this one was sold best offer accepted. So we don't know what someone paid for this. But it originally was sitting at $97.99. So that's a Milwaukee Brewers. Old school uniform. Autograph. P. That's JSA, which is, I think that's good enough. But, like, I'd like something like this. I think this would be cool, but, you know, $100 instead of buying a box of car, a you know, wax box, just pick something up like this, but. And then to frame it, I mean, that's a whole other, that's a whole other ball game. That's going to cost some money. That wasn't framed. That was just it by itself. But I like the old school jerseys. Like, I think it'd be cool to get something, something like that. And I really like these old, here's a 4188. Granted, Raleigh Fingers isn't known for being a Padre. JSA, COA, so that seems legit. Until someone gets caught. Griffey, Bonds, and Schwarber. Those would be good. Man, I bet Bonds would go for a good chunk of money. I don't think he signed very much. And with him not being associated with MLB right now, too much. I bet his, I bet his jerseys are expensive. So I think that's cool. I don't know what the front looks like. I kind of wish more players signed the front. I mean, I know you got their last name on the back and stuff. What's this? Let's see what Bonds does. Oh, no. With Bonds without much stuff out, the stuff seems to be pretty high. No. No. Do you want to get them in the Giants or the Pirates? Probably the Giants. That's what seems that everyone remembers him by. Oh, these aren't sold. Let's go to sold. I think I'd want one in the Giants. I think the Pirates would be interesting, though. But 262. That's one thing about the Giants jerseys at this time. They didn't have their name on the back, which isn't that big of a deal. Everyone knows who 25 was for the time period. Yeah. It's hard to see it on here. It's right in the middle of the 25 or the 5. Can I zoom in? Can't seem to zoom in. But it's right there. It's hard to see in this picture. That went for 262. Someone finally did free shipping on their high end product. Good for them. That's nice of them. So I don't know what those are. It's a bunch of fives. Did he autograph a bunch of fives? <laughs> I think he did. I think he legitimately autographed a bunch of number fives. Lot of seven. Very Bond sign. Autographed auto jersey number five. That is very interesting. That is something I've never seen before. I just don't know how to feel about that. And then here's another one, Willie Mays, for a bunch of number fours. Man, that just that seems too good to be true. Normally, if it is, uh, these aren't real holograms. They're holograms, but they're not like JSA or PSA or yeah PSA holograms. They're just some random company. Wish I could get a close up of it. That's funny. That's totally cheating the system. Whether they're real or not, that's kind of funny. Buy these for the price of one jersey and then go buy a bunch of jerseys with the number two and then stitch in your five. Or buy the 25s, pull the old five, put in the new five. <laughs> that, I did not know that was a thing. That is very interesting. I have a feeling that they're not real, though. It says authentication, Bonds Hollow. I don't trust that either. Great for framing or sewing on jerseys. Wow. That is... I did not know that was a thing. And then you could, you could have gotten three very Bonds autograph fives for 76 bucks. That's 25 bucks an autograph. Assuming they're real. 
Hey, this one's cool. This has the Bonds Hollow too. Maybe he has his own company, but no. Uh, Maze has his own company, and I've been told that you don't want to go through them. I've read several articles that the really Maze, like foundation company or whatever that does autographs, aren't have been caught counterfeiting. I like the back of that jersey though. That is awesome. I know it's a visitor jersey. That's cool. Let's see what the description says. On field gray road jersey. All numbers so on. Number on the back. Number five. Silver paint pin. Authenticated by Bonds. Authenticate. Bonds authenticated. Probably do a search and look up. Look up at that. That sold for four hundred bucks though. That's some big money there. Rob's card shop? What are you looking for? I I was showing off earlier, but uh, it kind of toned down, so I kind of just kind of got distracted and started doing other things. But it's mostly 2020 stuff, and most of it's very low end. If you're looking for a certain player or a certain uh, team, I do have a few decent uh, uh, autograph autographs and jersey stuff like that. But most of it's pretty low end. If there's anything you want to see. Okay. I guess I should rephrase. I have very few autographs. I'll show you my autographs. I have very few of them. Right here, I'll show you what I do have. I guess it would be better to show you what I do have than go through the list of what I don't have. Because I have a lot less. So, I do have the Gavin Lux autograph. Rookie. Um, Paul DeJong. Um, I don't know if you like the Yankees or not. It said New York, I have the rookie medallion, Aaron Judge. Another Aaron Judge relic. Um, almost everything here is uh, low win now. Galvin, I'll have to take a quick look. I do have another Gavin Lux here too. This is the foil. Um, I'll just compare it to uh, some SPs. I think that's it for autographs. As horrible as that sounds, I'm ready to sound like I have a ton of stuff here. I have a lot of... Uh, let me look up Lux real quick. It'd be less than eBay, so... I check eBay, but I'm selling for under eBay. So... There it is. Lux. Oh, my... No, I don't want you to print. Ow. Sorry, Leia. Sorry. Sorry. I'm printing now. I'm printing now. I'm printing now. All right. Let's go to Sony. Man, Lux has some, some autographs out this year. I like when they say in the auction, non-auto, which really clouds the searches. Well, I need to narrow the search down and put it in 1985. Uh, yeah, let me narrow the search. Had 707 results. That is totally not... No, buddy, stop. All right. A lot of people have been buying this card with uh, best offer accepted. So, man, there's a lot of variations of this. All right, one sold for 86. One sold for 115. 120. Oh, no. Oh, oh, 140. That was a model ago, though. Okay, 
Hey, no, no, no. Don't do that on the keyboard. Me, me. Me, me, me. So the last, the last autograph um, sold for 86. The last actual this one, not any variation or anything like that. Just straightforward, regular base autograph. Sold for $86 with $4 shipping. So it sold for $90. Um, I would sell it for $75. Seventy-five shipped, I guess I should say. So seventy-five, and I'll cover the shipping on it. Yeah, yeah, seventy-five shipped. Cause that'd be a little less than uh, what the last one sold for. The last one sold for eighty-six plus four. And I'll just show it to you, even if you're not interested. You know, I'll show you how it looks. Try the best I can. Show you how it looks. Whether you're interested, whether you're not. Just to get a good look of it anyway. So, I mean, it looks, to me, it looks really good. Like, I've been debating on getting it graded. I just don't want to wait a year and a half. Because um, there's not very many cards that I would be willing to grade. I would definitely be willing to grade this one. So, I'm not selling it because I don't think it will grade out. I'm just selling it to kind of recoup from all the 2020 stuff I bought this year. And what I was telling KC9 earlier, anything I sell tonight, most likely will be going back into vintage. So, <laughs> you know, if Gavin, if Gavin Lux ends up being a dud, I'll have some sort of vintage card that will totally make up for it, even though being a big star. At least I didn't just spend 75 bucks on other new cards. <laughs> So, yeah, let me know if you need anything else. Uh, if you want to look at anything else. Uh, well, you did you did name a team or two. No Cubs autos, though. No Cubs autos out here. Like I said, it's a lot of, a lot of lower end stuff. I do have a lot of like quarter and 50 cent stuff, you know, stuff like this. Someone was looking for Braves earlier, so these are literally like a quarter a piece. Not that one, though. That's a Cubs card number to fifth. No, no, I'm sorry. That one is out. Totally forgot about that. Trout, 50 cents. A lot of these foils, stuff like that would be like a quarter. Yankees, uh, gold, quarter. Nolan Ryan, Roberto Clemente, a lot of these lower end. Like I said, I'm not trying to sit there and say that. But most of these are quarter. The highest cards in these piles have been 50 cents. Normally for Trout. J.D. Martinez. David Fletcher Chrome. Stuff like that. Reggie Jackson. Insert, really amazing insert. Stuff like that. So if there's anything, if you want to look at more stuff, I'll definitely let you. I just want to give an impression that I got all these hot uh, autos and game used when it's really very few of them. <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot about that uh, KC9. I know we talked about it. I just didn't pull it. So it is now officially in your stack. I almost forgot. I was about to start trying to sell it again. Oh, again? I've heard you make more money if you sell the same card twice. <laughs> yeah you're sure very energetic I don't know what time it is what is it it is one in the morning no, what's this? it is one in the morning and you're that hyped up oh, no. both of you are still hyped up at one in the morning thank god I don't work tomorrow uh, all right So, I don't know. Well, KC9, I am going to, uh, I'm hoping this weekend to start hitting some of those complete sets, pulling out some rows. 
set. Every every oh, complete no, set should have a rose or two in it. What's this? Along with uh. I don't think I don't think you named anyone else. I think it was just Pete Rose. Cause I have a note, a note somewhere. Someone else was wanting uh, Pat Tabler, and I could have sworn a catcher. And I have the note somewhere in my cards. I just don't remember where it's at. Hey, bud. Yeah. Yeah. You're going nuts. <laughs> A six and a nine? Are they still up? <laughs> My kids are up pretty late because I work late. So I get home between nine and ten. And so it's really hard to get them to sleep as soon as I get home. And then Friday nights, it's, uh, Friday nights, it's, uh, I don't care if they stay up a little late because I don't have to be up early. They don't have to be up early. Hello, three card collectors. What's up? Oh, buddy, are you okay? I'm actually getting ready to get off here. Three card collectors. Uh, the Lizardo. It's it's one of those things I had a price on, and then the price kept going down. Uh, the price kept going down because of the newness of it. It was going for quite a bit. 2020 Tops Lizardo. What is that, orange? I don't think I have any of his cards. I don't really recognize the name too much. All right. So many people buy this card with the best Hello, offer. Wow, one sold for a hundred bucks. Orange refractor, numbered one of twenty-five. I wonder if that has anything to do with that price. This is numbered seventeen of twenty-five. Thanks on the looks. It's a nice card. It's definitely the best card I have pulled this year. 2020, definitely the best card I've pulled. So the only one that has um, has an actual number that is numbered to 25 uh, and not autographed. Cause some of these are autographed. Obviously, the autographed ones go for a lot more. So that was 100 best offer. That was 100 best offer. That was 100. That was 100. Well, I didn't know these were going for this much. My God. I don't remember what I paid for it, but I did not pay this much for it. I did not know this card would be going for so much. So the last one I can find went for 100. That was legit went for 100. That wasn't best offer, because obviously best offer, you don't get to see the price. And some of them went a little higher, but the most, the lowest and most recent one I could find went for a hundred on bidding on auction. So I think, um, 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 we could do seventy-five on the Lizardo. Man, that seems really low, but yeah, I can do I can do seventy-five shipped on the Lizardo. I, I honestly thought they went for less than that. That is crazy. And it's kind of like the Lux. Like, if I don't sell them, that's cool. Because <laughs> they're both great cards, and I'd probably just keep them. Yeah, that card that card does a lot better than I thought. Ooh, wow. Um, any Rangers, Autos, or Relics? Um, 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 I don't think I have any in my piles up here. Um, <laughs> I might have some older relics. I know I don't have anything newer. Um, I'd have to check. Uh, I have a box of some Rangers cards. 
let's see what's in my box. Rangers, Rangers, Rangers cards. I do not have any autographs. I do have one more spot to check. Of course, it's all mixed up and crazy. Audrey's autograph. Yeah, I hate to imagine how much that card goes for as numbered out of 25. I don't know, I just I guess it catches me off guard. Just because he's a, uh, you know, he's not one of the big big rookies this year. Yeah, I don't have any Rangers uh, autographs or relics. And by the looks of it, I don't even really have much Rangers stuff in general that's for sale. I have a, a website that I keep track of all my better cards in. I guess I go down that list and see if I have anything. I, I seem to be missing out on Rangers. First Bowman, I do not. Um, I do not. Well, uh, I don't think I do. Let me check. I have a website, too. I can double check real quick. First Bowman of 2019, 2020, or just good players in general? I guess would be the better question. I have been buying a lot of Bowman because of the price. Price has been insane lately. I ordered some. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I ordered some uh, blaster boxes from Walmart for 2020 Bowman, and then they ended up not coming out. So I don't know if I'm still going to see those or not. Um, website, 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 website. There it is. Good players? Okay, let me check. I probably don't. But I'll double check. There's a lot of, a lot of, you know, I'm like everyone else. I want a good copy of a lot of those too. And some of them, I, I don't have it labeled in my database. If it's a first Bowman or if it's just a prospect card. Which I need, I need to correct that because obviously first Bowman cards go for a lot more than the following year. Uh, it doesn't look like I do. Yeah, for whatever whatever reason, I've been missing out on Bowman for for quite some time now. Tatis. No Tatis. I thought I had a Tatis, but I don't. Eloy Jimenez. Top prospect, but no, not first Bowman. Sorry, man. Yeah, I don't have much on that aspect. I have some, and I don't have these like out, out yet, but I know I have a few Tatis rookies. Um, the flagship rookie. Uh, I think I have a, uh, man, it's hard to see right now with my eyes.
Label, yeah, I just, I don't have much. Yeah, I don't have much. I don't have much that's for sale anyway. I guess it's safer to say. I have a Ronald Acuna, but uh, I only have one, and I'm sticking to that one. Uh, I said that. I, I guess I don't have one of those either. No, I do. I do have one. Ronald Acuna, but I'm saving that one. If I ever duplicate it, though, I'm more than willing to sell if I get any duplicates. Some cards that seem to be a dime a dozen are the uh, the Ronald Acuna rookie debut cards and the uh, Juan Soto rookie debut. I've been accumulating a lot of those at a dollar a piece almost, and that doesn't even compare to the flagship versions of the same cards. Yeah, I'll have to look and see what the story is with the, the blasters I bought. I bought like 10 of them, like a pre-order on Walmart.com. And I don't know if I'm still going to get them when they release. I don't I don't know what the story is. I don't even know when I was supposed to get them. I could have sworn it was like April 16th or something like that. I had to look into it. I've been so busy lately and then going to the hospital. I just kind of actually forgot about it until really just now. I plan on doing some breaks online with uh on here on the channel with bowman and uh i guess i'll just have to wait till they come out i can't afford the hobby and stuff the hobby box okay cool casey nine thanks I'll, I'll have your card set aside here and uh once i come across a few more of those pete roses i'll let you know and like i said i'll probably be doing videos opening up those sets i got and pulling the pete rose out straight from there See you later. Bye. Bye. James says bye, evidently. Bye. 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 You saying bye, buddy? Bye. 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 Yeah, see you soon. Bye. Yeah. You guys ready to go to bed? No, don't play with that. You ready to go upstairs and go to bed? Yeah. I see that you took the pin I gave you and wrote all over your chest. No, what? no, no, you totally did. I could see it. <laughs> yeah, James always says bye. Say bye, James. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. All right, well, I think I'm going to have to head out of here because I have two toddlers up at 1.13 in the morning. It's about time I get them down to bed, down to sleep. You down to sleep? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get any writing on your back? Did your sister draw on you? What's your sister writing on? I have a bad feeling she has something in mind that she's drawing drawing on it now. Alright, well, I don't know who else is still around, but uh, I think I'm going to head out just because uh, it's about that time for the kitties. And uh, I do plan on putting up another video of stuff for sale um, of some of this stuff. It's not going to be live. It'll just be like a straight video. Anyone can view it and decide if they want anything or not so so and i probably won't do another live one for this particular stuff you know there's no point in trying to keep pushing it um, but i probably will make a single video maybe a little bit more organized where i not don't have cards scattered every which way and um, yeah i might put that out tomorrow so nothing's going away And uh, that's it. Well, I hope everyone has a good night. And uh, I have my email in the description of this video. So if anyone needs to get a hold of me for any reason on anything tonight, just uh, email me and I'll answer relatively soon, depending on the time of day and night it is. So, all right. See everyone later. Hopefully I'll catch everyone around. Maybe next Friday I'll jump back on live. But I definitely have some more videos coming because I got tons of mail sitting upstairs. Um, I have some complete sets I got last week that I still need to open up. Uh, 85 tops. I can't even think right now. Some other stuff. I think 84 Donruss or 84 Fleer or both. I don't even remember. I just bought a bunch of stuff. 
And I have a bunch of 90s wax boxes coming soon that I just wanted to open because I like the 90s. So Cool, saving one later. Thanks for stopping by. I gotta find the button. Turn this stuff off. No, don't hit that button. Can you say bye, James? Bye. Bye. Ah, there we go.